So to do y equals tan x, we're going to complete this table like we did for sine x with the quadrantal angles, and we're going to plot these points and see what kind of a pattern it gets. So we're going to get another wave function, like another wave shape or another wave curve. Maybe we are, maybe we're not. Let's find out. So the first thing, when x is 0, we're going to get the y value this time. We're going to do tan x. So y is going to be tan 0. And the quadrantal angles again, uh, like we did before, ASTC. And remember, we have an angle here, theta. And we've got x and y. And remember, it is cos theta, sine theta are the coordinates of this point as it moves around and theta changes. Okay, remember, if you forget, just arrive at each time. Well, that's x, y to get up there. And the hypotenuse is 1. So sine theta is y over 1. So sine is y. Yep. Cos theta is x over 1. So cos is x. That's right. Tan, how do we get tan? Tan is sine theta divided by cos theta. Or in other words, tan is just the y over the x. y over x. So if I'm doing tan 0, we're talking about this point here. Tan 0, so theta is 0. And what's the coordinates of this point here? It is 1 at 0. So we do y divided by x. So 0 divided by 1 is 0. So tan 0 is 0. And also, this is also uh, 2 pi, isn't it? When we're talking about radians, 0 radians and 2 pi radians are the same. It's 0 and 360. Also going to have a point there. So why don't we plot these as we go this time? 0, 0, point 0, 0, and the point 2 pi, 0. Okay, so yeah, maybe it's going to be another wave shape, right? Pi over 2. Let's figure that out. So when x is pi and 2, y is going to be tan pi over 2. So this time, where is theta pi over 2? Up here. What are the coordinates of this point? 0, 1. And again, tan is always the y divided by the x. So tan pi over 2 is 1 divided by 0. And that is undefined. Ooh, ouch. So pi over 2 is undefined. We'll just put an x there. What about pi? So when x is pi, so I'm just going to leave that for the moment. I'll come back to that undefined bit and I'll tell you what's going to happen. When x is pi, y is going to be tan pi. What's tan pi? Okay, well, where is theta equal to pi? It's going to be over here. Theta equals pi. What are the coordinates of this point? Minus 1, 0. Is that defined? So what's the y divided by the x? 0 divided by minus 1. That is okay. Oh, so we've got 0, blank, 0. What's next? 3 pi over 2. When theta is 3 pi over 2, we are down here. And the coordinates of this point are 0, negative 1. And what do we get there? We're doing x is 3 pi over 2. Y equals tan 3 pi over 2, which is the y divided by x, we get minus 1 over 0, undefined again. Hmm, interesting. So what we do in this case is, where we have undefined x values, what that means is we draw a vertical asymptote. Okay, so we've got 0, 0, oh, and we've got another 0 at pi, and this is going to follow a pattern. So we've got 2 pi, pi, 0, so every pi we have uh, 0 as the y value. So that's going to be a pattern. 0, 0, 0, 0. And everywhere between we have these x's. And the x's are vertical asymptotes. So you get, take your ruler and you draw a vertical dotted line because it's not part of the function but it's a line that's going to help us guide drawing the line. So let's put those in like so and don't forget to put arrows because they keep going up and down. Put the, put the equations of the vertical asymptotes as well. So x is negative pi and 2 x is pi and 2, x is 3 pi and 2. Okay, it now asks us to plot the curve, or sorry, sketch the curve. We don't actually have any other points, so we don't know whether it's up or down. Remember ASTC? This can tell us if it's up or down. So in the first quadrant, all trig ratios are up. So this is actually the first quadrant, right? 0 to 90, 90 to 180, 180 to 3, 270, 270 to 360. This is the first quadrant. Quadrant 1, quadrant 2, quadrant 3. Quadrant 4. Remember, this goes back to quadrant 4, quadrant 3. It keeps following that pattern. In the first quadrant, is tan positive or negative? Well, they're all positive in the first quadrant. The output's going to be a positive value. In the second one, sine is positive. But that would mean tan and cos are negative, so tan's going to be negative down here. Third quadrant, tan is positive and sine and cos are negative, so it's going to be up here. And fourth quadrant, Cos only is positive, which means tan is going to be negative. So it's going to go up, down, up, down. And it's going to follow that pattern, of course. 
A S T C A S T C up down up down. It's going to look like this. Okay, because it cannot cross uh, these asymptotes. So we get this weird shape, and it continues. Uh, the tan is a little bit different to sine and cosine, and it keeps going. And from here, comes up here and down here. So there we go. So that is the graph of y equals to tan x. Let's write the equation next to it. And we're going to go through and do a couple of these points now. Okay, let's see if they agree with what's going on here. First thing, point R. So it's telling us that x is pi over 4. Y equals tan pi and 4. Oh, that's easy, that's first quadrant. Tan pi and 4 is tan 45. Tan 45 is 1. Pi over 4, 1. Let's see if that agrees. So, pi over, so here's 0. Here's pi over 2. Where's pi over 4? Halfway, right? Right in between. In other words, 90. This would be 45. Okay, pi over 4. And if we go up, and my diagram's a bit off, but that should go right through there. And that is our point R. Let's squeeze that in here. All right, so when uh, it goes through all the 45 degree angles, it cuts at one there. And by the way, the tan graph also cuts at 45 degrees when it goes through the x-axis, if you've drawn it to scale. Another point, so 5 pi over 6, so y equals tan 5 pi over 6. Hmm, that is larger than 92, isn't it? So let's do our ASTC. Where is tan 5 pi over 6? This is uh, multiples of pi over 6, so we've got to break these up into 30s. Pi and 6, 2.6, 3 6, 3.6, 4.6, 5.6. We're in the second quadrant. What's our acute reference angle here? Well, theta is 5.6. What's our acute reference angle? It's just going to be one of those. This pi and 6. Tan theta is just tan of the reference angle with a plus or minus at the front. So in the second quadrant, sine only is positive, which means tan is negative. And what is tan pi over 6? Tan pi over 6 is tan 30. Tan 30 is root 3 over 3. So what are the coordinates? We've got 5 pi over 6, a given x value, and our y value is negative root 3 over 3. Let's graph that. So 5 pi over 6, ooh, where's that? So 5 pi over 6, these are multiples of 30 degrees. So we can think of pi over 2 as uh, 3 pi over 6, right? And let's split this up into 3 equal values. So we've got pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, 3 pi over 6, 4 pi over 6, 5 pi over 6. Here's 5 pi over 6. And coming down here, whatever that is, bring that over onto here. Might not be that, might not be very good, but let's have a look. This is negative root. 3 over 3. How big is that? By the looks of it, it's like maybe negative half. Do that on the calculator and it will tell you that it is negative 0 0.58. Oh, that's pretty good. Just about half, halfway down. Yeah, mine looks a bit closer to mine's a bit wrong. It should be a bit lower than that, I think. Okay, so there is our point S. Okay, so that is the tan function, y equals tan x. So D, what's the period of the tan graph? Well, we don't have amplitude for tan, do we? Do we have like a maximum or a minimum uh, displacements from the center? No, they go up forever and down forever. Uh, the branches do. I guess we call these branches. But period, does it repeat the process here? Does it have a pattern? Yes, it does. How often does it repeat? Well, we go from zero, it's coming through, uh, the x-axis going up through zero. When's the next time that happens? The next time that happens is pi. So from zero to pi, that's one full cycle. Pi over two to three pi over two. That's pi if you subtract those values. That's one full cycle. Okay, so every pi, it goes back to where it started. So minus pi, zero, pi, two pi. It's repeating itself. So the period is just pi. Uh, show the period. I forgot to do this for something. Just go back and do it for me, okay? A couple of places you could put this. Here's one period, from there to there. There's more than one correct answer for this. So from there to there, that's one full cycle, right? Or you could have also have done this. Period. Period. There we go. And the last thing, so make sure you go back and do that for sign, by the way. Apologies for that. Let's take the domain and range. This is a little bit trickier than for sign. Domain, what are the x inputs? Are there any x values that do not give outputs? Yes, the vertical asymptotes. The domain are all x, all real x, except x equals, and where are the vertical asymptotes? So we've got minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. Where else? 3 pi over 2, will it also happen at negative 3 pi over 2? Yes, it's a pattern. Plus or minus 3 pi over 2. And when will be the next one? 
pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, plus or minus 5 pi over 2. What about the range? Do we have maximum and minimum y values? No, it just goes up forever, it goes down forever, and it goes through 0. So the range is all real y. All right, different to sine, isn't it? Okay, everyone, so that is how we graph the basic trigonometric functions y equals sine x and y equals tan x. And for homework, you're just going to do y equals cosine x. And you're going to go through this whole process. And once you've done it all, have a look on Desmos and your GDC. See if they all uh, agree with what you've done.